Hey guys, welcome to today's video. There's a bug in my room. I am going to be doing something that no one else has done yet, and that is the wear test and review of Fenty Beauty. Very new brand, completely unheard of. No one's talking about it. Here is what I have picked up from Sephora. Um, I picked up things that I knew I would wear. I didn't want to pick up the whole line. Uh, while I would love to review that for you, the ship is expensive and I, I still want to buy food, you know? I'm just going to be trying everything on. I have not used anything yet. The only thing I've unboxed is the sponge just to dampen. Look at these new tones. Uh, just to dampen this thing with some agua. But yeah, everything's going to be first time trying it out, first thoughts, and then Wear test throughout the day, checking in, showing you guys how stunning or how not so stunning I'll be looking. Let's begin. Alright, I did not buy the primer because the description of it was like a dry skinned person's nightmare. I was like, no, no, I don't need any mattifying, I'm good. So I just applied my Glossy and moisturizer off camera, and now I'm gonna go in with the foundation. I am in the shade 180. Hopefully, this is my shade. Uh, it was very hard to tell online. So, this is what it looks like very chic, heavy, expensive feeling packaging. Has a pump, thank you, God. I do not love when a foundation has to be poured, it's not not the business. So, this says that it's medium to full coverage for all long wear, light as air. That's all it says. So I'm just gonna squeeze some onto the back of my hand. Ooh, this is like very watery. I have high hopes. Maybe it won't be so drying. Kind of nervous about it being drying just because the primer seemed like it was meant for oily skin, so I'm worried the foundation is too. This looks like a pretty decent match. It smells really good, like a soft vanilla. Usually foundations smell like chemicals, which I just adore. Okay, this is super light coverage and I'm kind of into it. I thought for some reason it was going to be very full. Very, very light. Like, super light. That was two pumps on that side of my face. As you can see, when I stretch it across the skin, it kind of just dissipates, almost like a water foundation. But it's a lot more gel-like and a lot more comfortable than the standard water foundation, which I feel is usually very just pointless to work with. Upon first impression, I would say this is like an elevated water foundation. This also is my exact, exact skin tone, which I am like very, I'm impressed with myself because usually when I buy foundation on the internet, it shows up and it's like white and beaming yellow. This is like the perfect pale olive, shade 180 for anyone similar to me. Does not have any peach in it, any orange, it's just like pure yellow goodness. The sponge is really nice. It's a lot softer and smushier than a beauty blender, so I feel like it really helps to melt the product into the skin. It could be why the product shears out so much as you blend it out, because I do feel like it could be sucking up more product than a beauty blender. I'm gonna try to build it in some areas where I want more coverage. Sorry for flipping you off. It blends okay. I would say that it doesn't like build up on itself to the point where it's gonna cover everything, but it does reduce uh, the redness. These are like actual blemishes, so they're quite red and quite irritated. Kind of concealing them, but they're also peeking through. Um, if you know me, you don't. You know I don't care if my blemishes peek through, but I know a lot of us really want to cover that shit up, and this isn't giving that to me. I don't mind it, but if you do, you might want to reconsider. Feels very weightless as well. Um, my face is not sticky whatsoever, but it also doesn't feel tight and dry, so I feel like this really is like a foundation for everyone, just upon initial impression. We'll see how it wears throughout the day though. Next I'm going to be going in with the Matchsticks Trio and I'm only going to be using the highlight and con concealer contour shade from these two. Packaging of these, super cool. They stick together which I feel is great for travel because it just is going to save room in your makeup bag uh, rather than having everything being all floating around. I hate when my makeup bag is disorganized so I love the idea of the magnets. These claim to be curated for your skin tone, magnetized for lightest air layering on the go. So let's see how they work. I'm just going to use this compact as a mirror. I have not yet tried this product but I need, I need closeness when applying concealer. So I'm just going to go in with a brush. I feel like rubbing stick products directly to the skin can create issues at times. I always apply mine with a brush just to avoid lifting up anything. I'm just going to dust this around. With a brush, I feel like this applies super beautifully. Uh, it's not, it doesn't feel dry right off the bat, 
which is unusual given the fact that the foundation isn't super hydrating. Usually for me, if I don't have a ton of moisturizer happening under here, it just instantly looks like I didn't get a lot of sleep. But this is really nice. It's not chalky whatsoever. I feel like this shade is a little light, so I'm just gonna drag it down a little further than normal. On this eye, I am going to apply it directly from the tube. Not really tugging at the skin too much, but also not greasy. See, it's a perfect in the middle type of consistency. I'm gonna use the flat side of this sponge to blend this out. Honestly, I like this. I really like it. It's blending out very, very prettily. The sponge is giving it more of a glow on this side, but I also can see that the sponge is lifting up the product very slightly, so the coverage is a little bit less on this right side. I'm gonna put some on my mustachio. I would say this does a very good job at brightening. It's a very light coverage, but very intense brightening, which is unique because usually it has to be like both. Usually it's like full coverage, very lightening, but this one's very lightweight, but still Makes me look really awake, which I really like. Um, I feel like it's very trendy in that regard. A lot of stick beauty products are this way these days where they tend to only work if you have like very minimal imperfections. So if you're someone who has blemished skin, I feel like this would be good to maybe use in your um, like usual cream contour and highlight routine, but I would not perhaps recommend using it as a spot concealer or anything like that. It's like strictly I feel uh, not strictly. I feel like it's perfect to use as a matte brightener. I don't know so much about it being a concealer. Like a concealer, I feel it just masks all of that and this isn't really masking it. It's just making me look like I have a light layer of makeup on. Next, I'm gonna go in with the uh, Invisimat Blotting Powder. This says that it's an instant refresh and on-the-go filter effect. I did see uh, my friend Alyssa Ashley testing this out on her Snapchat and it was totally invisible and she was like, you guys, it is invisible. So I was like, that is what I need. This is what I've been looking forward to in the collection because usually like white based uh, translucent powders like this really just do not, do not work for me. It comes with a little sponge, but I'm going to test it out on this eye first, how I would usually do it and that would be to use the damp beauty blender so I'm just gonna pick it up from a corner in case the wetness of this seals the powder and I'm just gonna dab it on not super brightening I feel like it may be one of those that uh, kind of dries down into the concealer or makes it look a little bit darker but overall like not picking up any texture under the eyes whatsoever when applied with a damp sponge on the other eye, I'm just gonna take this tapered brush uh, by Japanesque I believe and just dot it under here Weirdly, a lot more brightening with the brush. Usually I have the exact opposite. If I pack something on with a damp sponge, it usually just makes the product so much brighter and more smooth. But with a brush, this is like noticeably uh, looking more even. It's not giving you like the sunken tear duct, tear trough vibe as this side is. And this is truly invisible. I'm like caking it on and I'm not seeing like any sort of like real kick up or anything like that. So we'll see how it wears throughout the day. I am going to contour and bronze with the other two uh, match sticks I have. So the contour shade I'm gonna be using is Amber. It's like a really pretty neutral mink tone. Maybe a little dark, it's very gray. And the tone that I'm using to bronze up with is Latte, which is a very nice yellowy based terracotta. Not a lot of orange in this, which I also love a lot of times brands, even when they come out with a lot of shades, everything has that peach or orange undertone to it. These seem very well curated, like there's no weird peachy or unnatural undertones in them. I'm going to be taking Amber on this uh, It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Angled Radiance Brush. Just going to dot it on here and then uh, press it into the areas where I have a natural shadow. This is super pretty, honestly. This might be my new go-to contour that is so beautiful. While it's very gray, it's not like a dead gray. There's some sort of warmth in here somehow, although it looks like a straight up slate. It looks like such a natural shadow. I really like this. On this side, I'm just going to dot it on to see how it blends when it's applied to the skin first. So I much prefer it uh, blended out when applied onto the brush. It just gives a more natural, more easy to diffuse situation and then on this side applying it directly to the skin is going to give you a much more pigmented uh, intense 
finish, which I feel would be better for things like I said, like photography, stuff like that, whereas this I feel is beautiful for every day out of the houseware. I'm just gonna do the same thing with latte. Dust it onto this little Jaffa desk brush and then press it into the skin. What I'm noticing about her stick products is that even when you apply them onto the brush, none of it sticks down like in a particular area that you then have to spend extra time blending out, which puts your foundation at risk for lifting up off of your skin. Everything blends out very beautifully when applied like this, which I have not yet found in any stick products, even with Nude Sticks, who is like my go-to stick product makeup line, I feel like they, I still usually have to like scroll the brush off, but with these I can go right in and not have to really kind of like guesstimate how much I need to melt into the brush before applying it to the face, so it's really great and, and like effortless, gotta run out the door sense. On this side, I'm gonna continue with the theme, just drawing on my face. I feel like they're a little hard to blend out this way. You can see they're really sticking down. Uh, definitely recommend applying them on the brush first. I have one more here just to use as a blush. This one is in the shade Redick. So these claim to be uh, used for highlight, blushing and enhancing, long wear lightest air layering. So I definitely uh, am down with the idea that these layer really well because with the other, the contour and the bronzing and the concealing ones, none of them lifted up on each other. Even when I apply the stick directly to my skin, which is usually something that tends to make the products all just kind of like mix in together, everything stayed very put. So the blush was the hardest to blend out out of all of the uh, match sticks, especially when applied to the face. Really tugged away a lot of that foundation, but I feel like it's able to be blended out pretty nicely on both sides. To highlight, I'm going to be using the Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter Duo in the shades Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. Lightning Dust seems to be more subtle, whereas Fire Crystal looks very intense and very glittery. Since the left side of my face is more... There's a hair. Since this side of my face is more subtle today, I'm going to use Lightning Dust on this side. That is so pretty. It's almost as if it blends out like a cream, although it's a powder. That is so beautiful. Not picking up any texture in this area whatsoever. Immediate, instant love on how it looks, how it blends out. Going in with Fire Crystal. Oh my god. This one is very intense. I'm getting strong day to night vibes in this palette. This one has a lot of glitter. If you love a glittery highlight, you're going to love this. I personally have it in my lashes, in my eyebrow, my nostril right now. Not my usual go-to, but perhaps the glitter will fade throughout the day and leave a really nice sheen. And now I'm going to go in with the Gloss Bomb. This says it's a universal lip luminizer, addictive shine, nourishing wear, universal finishing touch. When it comes to lip gloss, I'm all about the smell. This smells like something I've eaten before. It reminds me, do you guys remember those little like lifesavers that were called cream savers? It smells like the orange one. Why God are they discontinued because now I need. So because your girl has like negative 0.572 lips, I am going to line them a little bit with uh, Exposed by Kylie Cosmetics. It's disappearing down into the tube. Now I'm gonna go over that with one coat of the gloss bomb. This is really pretty, smells really good, tastes really good. Uh, I would say it's about the same color as the lip liner I'm already wearing. So like a neutral terracotta peach, nothing too pink though, really flattering. The only thing I'm worried about is that it's so thin that I feel like it is going to migrate throughout the day. Uh, it is 11.08, 11.07 a.m. Uh, and I am going to wear this all day. I'm not setting my face with any setting spray at all, just going to let it live see how it survives the day, maybe through like 8 p.m. ish, and I'll check back in and give you guys my thoughts on how it wears. This is what it looks like in daylight right after applying. Really pretty. I actually really like how uh, nothing looks cakey. I thought with stick products, it could be kind of cakey, especially under the eyes, but no issues so far. About to go run some errands, and I will check back in. This camera's heavy as shit. Go potty! Come on! Come on! Are you stubborn? She's like, hell to the yes. You're so cute. You're really glossy. I need to like make that into a highlighter. Didn't mess that shit up, did I? No, I didn't. be a like a vlogger and a driver because 
Although 5'7", I'm much too small for this car. And knowing me, this phone would fly into my face and... Beautiful. There's always famous people at this grocery store and I'm like 90% sure someone's gonna yell at me for filming and like it's really sad. Back from the grocery store, that's right too. So, so far so good. Two things though, the under eye ridge is starting to look a little bit suspect. Uh, looks like I didn't set it, although I kind of piled on the powder, so already creasing an hour in, getting nervous for the rest of the day. Uh, lip gloss is starting to really travel around. All I've had since applying it is that one Napoleon Dynamite sip of water. Uh, I'm about to eat though, so we will see what it looks like. I'm gonna check in a few hours from now though because I have to start editing this video and then uh, run some more errands, so I will talk to you. What are your thoughts, feelings, concerns? Um, look at my face, you have to look at my face. Stop looking at the TV, look at my face. Look at my beautiful face. <laughs> okay, so what I'm noticing is not only do I have mascara in my under eye, it's starting to crease around the whole nose. Only four hours into this journey of wearing it until 8 p.m. Concealer. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Hold please. Alright, so it is 620, 621. Uh, I was gonna wear this until 8, but I decided to cut the time short now just because things are starting to fade in a way where it's just not looking good at all, and I want it to be at a position where I can like kind of see what went wrong. I wanted it to be like still on my face in a flattering way so that I could assess, you know, because I feel like every Makeup look hits that point where you look in the mirror and it just looks like you've seen some shit even if you've done nothing all day, which was basically me today. I feel like things faded quite significantly for as little activity as I did. I That part to me is just weird, but we'll start with the foundation. So uh, I'm gonna put close-ups on the screen. Overall, the foundation held up pretty well. There's no like noticeable patchiness or anything. I will say like around my chin, it's just breaking up slightly, uh, broke up totally, there's like none left on the tip of my nose, which is normal for me. Uh, around the sides of the nose, it really bunched up there, not noticing any issues around my smile lines or my forehead lines or anything like that, so I would give the foundation like a 7 out of 10. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 is because I've used uh, foundations that are slightly more affordable that will like look flawless throughout the entire day without having to go in and like really amp it up with like a good primer or a good setting spray so it's about a 7 out of 10 for me I would wear it again uh, I think I'm going to wear it a lot but I will be implementing a different primer and showering myself in setting spray just to lock everything in the matchsticks as concealer let me just say that I really hope Fenty Beauty formulates their own set, very specific concealer. After about one hour, my under eye looked just not great, like at all. Like totally not good. And as you can see in the close up, it's just totally like gone in some areas. Yes, my mascara did mingle down into it. Um, I feel like that happens with me no matter what mascara or concealer I'm using. But there's a lot of darkness going on. Like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, I feel like it's great for brightening. For concealing, no. A concealer really sticks down, camouflages, is supposed to be like very long lasting and great. This one I feel just kind of faded away and I'm not like an eye toucher or itcher when I wear makeup. Like I have trained myself not to touch around my eyes and it looks as if I kind of rubbed my eyes. Uh, Good thing though is that there is not a lot of creasing happening up on my eyelids. Usually my eyelids crease really easily if I don't prime them even when I'm not wearing eyeshadow and I see that there's very minimal uh, greasiness happening there which I really like. On the cheeks though, absolutely beautiful. This is like the best part of the look still. Nothing has patched up here or lifted up the matchsticks, blended out onto the cheeks. Flawless. The contour, bronzer, and blush. Probably my new favorite uh, cream stick products. Truly, they're super good. 10 out of 10. Regarding the setting powder, I think it did a good job. Um, it held up on other areas of my face, except around the areas I use the matchstick to conceal. So I'm pretty sure that it's the matchstick 
causing things to break up and not that setting powder because my skin still is like very soft and feels weightless like there's no not even a hint of oil coming through and although I'm dry I do tend to at the end of the day have a little bit of stickiness like everyone else it's just not to an extreme point and I really don't feel a lot of stickiness going on uh, seven hours later so to me that's pretty good the lip gloss it is still there I know that it looks a little wild but it has been seven hours right eleven yes yeah, seven hours I've eaten three times three meals and it is still slightly shiny although it bled so much I feel like it's just like everywhere it stays on which I was not expecting when I was first putting it on I was like I feel like this is gonna be gone in an hour it's very lightweight slick kind of a smooth gel texture and it really has stayed on all day I am impressed I almost forgot the highlighters are like the best part of the looks actually second to the matchsticks on the cheeks lasted all day absolutely did not fade off this side has a bit of glitter kind of sprinkled around which you'll see in the close-up photos and footage but this side over here where I use the more subtle one is divine the powder feels like a gel almost they're really cool if you try them out let me know how you like them overall thoughts the foundation I feel will work for any skin type I am so dry and I have dry patches and it did not stick to them whatsoever it did not the powder did not emphasize them there was no emphasizing of anything going on with that foundation it didn't emphasize my breakout or stick to the dry skin around it matchsticks think they're awesome like I said be cautious using it as a concealer. Lip gloss, I absolutely love. Powder, love. Truly feel like her products were very well formulated in the sense that they can work for a bunch of different skin types as well as skin tones. Overall, I would give like the overall experience like a seven out of 10. Uh, obviously not a full 10 out of 10 because it looks like I, I feel like it looks like I've been wearing this makeup a lot longer than I have. I just wish that it was, lasted slightly longer. I really did nothing today that should have like made it look so wind blown. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you liked this. This was like one of the most fun videos I've ever done. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to see more in the future. Let me know your thoughts on the collection below, good or bad. I am not like sensitive to that kind of stuff. I would love to hear your opinions and what you've tried out. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll talk again in my next one.